Welcome to the course on the molecules in motion. We have talked about the various uh, kinetic, kinetic theory of gases in terms of the distribution function. We have also derived or uh, talked about various parameters associated with the um, kinetic theory like distribution function, the various forms of velocities, what was the last class we discussed about the collision the mean free path, the collision, what is the collision diameter, we have talked about those. These concepts can be taken over further, but uh, where we will apply these concepts and how will we interpret the observations which we see. See most of the science and experiments which we are doing and we are trying to model them is actually based on some parameters which we measure which is happening in reality and those observations we make, we take note of that and then we start to uh, formulate a model. So, today we are going to extend that concept, we are still on gas systems, we are talking about perfect gases, but we are going to talk about the transport properties of a perfect gas. Transport properties as you can understand, what does it mean? We are talking about transport of, uh, of something, transport of the gas some, or some uh, properties of the gas. The transport processes occur in a gas if the gas is not uniform with respect to composition, temperature and velocity. It changes it continues to uh, remain, there, there is going to be no transport processes occurring if there is uniformity in composition, temperature and velocity all throughout the gaseous medium which we are talking about. So, if there is a inhomogeneity in composition or temperature and velocity, we from the observations which we have uh, seen due to in, in, uh, in from our day to day life, we see that the transport of matter, if you are talking about a non homogeneity in composition, transport of matter from occurs from a region of high concentration to the region of low concentration, if there is no bulk flow involved. So, this transport of matter from higher concentration to a region of lower concentration, when there is no bulk flow occurring, like the whole gas is not at together moving from one place to another, this process is called as diffusion. Similarly, if you have a temperature difference or non-uniformity in the system, then the transport of heat, the energy in the form of heat from high temperature region to low temperature region gives rise to thermal uh, process called as thermal conduction. So, the transport of matter due to non homogeneity in composition gives rise to diffusion when there is no <coughs> bulk flow involved. Similarly, the transport of energy in the form of heat occurs when there is a temperature difference and the te uh, this will give rise to a thermal conduction in the system. Similarly, there is another uh, uh, um, process which can be associated when we have a transfer of momentum from a region of high velocity to a region of low velocity. This gives rise to a transport or flow system known as the viscous flow. So, we have just now pointed out three important transport processes. One is the transport of matter due to homogeneity of composition, the other is the transport of energy in the form of heat due to uh, differentiation or uh, non homogeneity in temperature. And this has to be remembered there is no convectional uh, uh, in involved in this, that means convection will in increase in temperature gradient gives rise to convectional uh, uh, form of current which can be. <coughs> also associated with the flow system, but only when we do not have that uh, such a high difference in temperature that we have a convection associated only, then we can associate the process with uh, thermal conduction. Similarly, we have associated with the flow of um, a system depending on the difference in velocity of the 
matter, matter or particles or molecules in the gas when we have a transfer of momentum from a region of high velocity to low velocity. Similarly, which we, what we have seen is not new like we always we know that an, the, an energy is going to flow from high temperature to low temperature region in the form of heat. Similarly, we know from our experimental observations that matter is going to always flow from higher concentration to lower concentration. So, these processes what we are talking about the transport properties are commonly expressed and in number of phenomenological equations. Why do we call this phenomenological? Phenomenological means we are uh, having some experimental observations and these experimental or Im uh, empirical uh, observations are summarized to give rise to these equations. So, these are actually basically these equations are empirical summaries of experimental observation. So, all these are occurring in our everyday life, what we have observed based on these observation, we may uh, take, uh, carry out experiments and from that we summarize and this these are uh, these formulations which we have give rise to equations based on our understanding are known as the phenomenological equations. And these equations are based on the rate of flow being proportional to the rate of change of some sort of a property of the system with distance like it is a gradient of the a particular property like rate of flow of a, of gas of or a property of a gas is going to be proportional to the gradient of that property or some other property that means the gradient means in uh, the rate of change of the property with distance. The rate of migration of a property is measured by a term known as the flux of the property. We have discussed the term flux before. The rate of migration or rate of transport of a property is me measured by the flux of the property and that we denote as J. Okay. The flux of the property that is J is the quantity of that property that passes through a given area in a given interval of time divided by the area and the duration of the interval. Okay. So, it is a ratio what we are talking about flux is nothing but the quantity of that property passing through a given area at unit time or a given time interval divided by the area divided by the duration of the interval. Okay. If the property is matter which we are measuring the flow we are talking about a rate of flow. Now, if the rate of flow is a uh, of flow of matter, matter means substance, the property of is matter as we can associate with the diffusion process, the flux is the matter flux expressed in the number of molecules of the matter per um, meter square per unit seconds per second okay because it is per unit area per unit interval of time so the uh, we express the property of that matter or the, um, the um, uh, flux of that matter in terms of the number of molecules per square meter per second. If the property is energy like heat energy like in thermal conduction we have the energy flux which is expressed in joules per square meter per second. Okay. So, just have a look at what we are going to just now discuss. These are all extensions of the various ph uh, phenomenological equations experimental observations on transport properties show that the flux of a property is proportional to the first derivative of some other related property. That is what we were just now discussing. The flux of a property whenever we are having a transport uh, processes taking place 
we have experimental observations that show that the transport pr property show that the flux of uh, the property of any particular property is proportional to the first derivative of some related property. First derivative that means the gradient we are talking about or rate of change with distance. Okay. The ch change with distance is also uh, what we are going to look into. The, it is the same as the first gradient, it is first, uh, same as the first derivative. For example, take a look, uh, let us talk about the diffusion process. Flux of a matter diffusing that is the number of particle passing through say here let, this is the diagram you have a diagram here where we see this is the axis, this is the direction z, this is the direction x. Okay. So, this is z and then let this be x. Okay. So, what we are looking? We are looking at the flow of matter along the z direction. Okay. So, the flux of matter diffusing that is the number of particles passing parallel to the y axis z axis of a container of a imaginary window in a given interval divided by the area of the window and the duration of the interval is found to be proportional to the first derivative of the concentration. Okay. So, what we have summarized is the flux of matter which is associated with the diffusion process, flux of matter is proportional to the number of particles passing parallel to the y, uh, z axis of a container of imaginary window and in a given time interval divided by the area of the window divided by the duration of time. This is defined as the flux. This flux is going to be proportional to the first derivative of concentration. Okay. So, first derivative of concentration if I talk in, temper of, in terms of number of particles that is the number density we are talking about, that is the number density it is the total number of molecules in uh, contained in the total volume of the gas. Okay. So, this is the number density N v, the change of number density with distance dx. Okay. So, this can be equivalent sometimes we can talk in terms of the number density or we can talk in terms of the number of moles present in the total volume, the expressions are the same. So, whatever we can uh, try to express in terms of the concentration either in the terms of the number of molecules present or in the total volume that, giving, that gives you the number density or the total number of moles in the um, 1 liter or on the volume of the container of the gas. So, in this equation this is the distance we, we are looking into through which it is passing. Okay along parallel to the z axis of the container, this is the container suppose we have. So, the n v is the number density of the particles, the number of particles per unit volume that is m cube or the concentration of the particles that is moles per meter cube and the s i unit of this flux is uh, you just see what is going to be the s i unit of this flux, flux you can easily see. Okay. This is the number density, number density if you if I talk in terms of the number of molecules per unit volume m, m, per meter cube, this is going to be number of molecules per meter cube and this is going to be the distance. Okay. So, the number, uh, number density uh, uh, from this we can see that uh, we will not get the exact value of flux, flux we have defined already it is the number of particles uh, passing through an imaginary window um, of area A and um, in time uh, some time given time divided by the area of the window divided by the time. So, if I if you look at the definition 
then you you can have then the number of molecules which are passing uh, uh, through the window per unit area this is the area m square per unit time per second so this is the definition of flux why it may not be equal to this is what we are going to look into see what you are getting here is concentration this is moles per meter cube and this is meter this is meter this is meter cube this is so what you have moles per meter me, uh, the different differential concentration uh, the gradient which we are seeing is dc by dz will be what will be the unit this is moles per meter cube and this is meter so it will become moles per meter to the power 4 okay so this you see is not going to be the expression of the flux flux we have got from the definition it is the number of molecules which is passing through an imaginary window uh, per unit area of the window per unit time okay so this is the per unit area meter square and this is the time okay so now let us look at this diagram this diagram you see this is a region and we are to moving along this axis and uh, along the, this axis we are saying the j is positive and the gradient which we have is negative that means the change of the number uh, number density with the direction z is negative or the change of concentration of the particles with the distance z is going to be negative why because you see here the number of molecules is high and here the number of molecule is low and, and what is our empirical observation our empirical observation is that the matter or uh, molecules will flow from a concentration if there is a concentration gradient involved it will always flow from the higher concentration region to the lower concentration region so the prop proportionality of the this what we are having flux of matter to the concentration gradient this is the gradient which we are having this is the concentration gradient we could talk in number uh, number density gradient or concentration gradient we actually mean the number of particles in the total volume is known as the first law of uh, fix first law of diffusion so it's a diffusion of matter so you get the flux of matter and according to the uh, flux uh, uh, according to the equation the uh, flux of matter is going to be proportional to the first derivative of the concentration with distance or it, we say it is the concentration gradient along z okay along z means along through towards which the gas is going to flow if the concentration varies steeply if the concentration varies steeply what happens that means if there is when is it going to be varying steeply this, that means this slope is going to be much steeper okay when is this going to be much steeper when this high and this low are having a lot of difference okay so if there is a high difference in the number of constant uh, number of molecules or the concentration of molecules from the region high region to while uh, to, towards the region where it's low then obviously this is going this will be very steep the slope will be very steep so what will happen then the diffusion will be faster okay so according to the fixed first law of diffusion if you have a steeper uh, if the concentration varies very steeply of the if the gradient is um, very high of concentration then the diffusion diffusion process is going to be faster what happens if the number density or the concentration of molecule from this region moving to this region actually we are moving to this along this here we have concentration of high number of particles here we have low number of particles so as we are moving from this side to this side what we are moving we are moving from a, a higher concentration of particles to a lower concentration of particles what happens if there is no difference at all if the 
particles here, number of particles or number density of particles here and number density of the popped particle here is going to be equal. Then this gradient becomes 0, there is no gradient at all, the concentration remains unchanged. Then what happens? There is no going to be no flux generated. There, go, there is going to be no net flux if the concentration is uniform. That means, the gradient of the concentration along this axis is 0. Since matter flows down the concentration gradient, okay, matter flows down the concentration gradient from high concentration to low concentration, J should be always positive. Okay. The J is always positive because in the flux is the number of particles which are moving per unit area, per unit time. This is, uh, number of particles which are moving will be, cannot be negative. There, if there is a gradient and in the particles and the matter since matter flows from higher concentration to a lower concentration region, it is expected that the sum of the particles will diffuse and if the sum, some particles diffuse, you will have some flux generated and this flux is going to be the J which we are talking about, this cannot be negative. But what happens? This can be positive only when, when this gradient which you have is negative. Either it is a number density gradient with the distance or the concentration of particles or molecules with distance has to be negative. That means, how, what, what is the gradient? It is the difference between two points, the final minus the initial divided by the final minus the initial. If the final is lower, then the uh, initial is higher. That means, we are starting from here and going to this. Then obviously, the value which we get will be negative because the uh, uh, lower part is always going to increase, this is going to be always positive. But the number of particles which we are having in this region initially to the what, what we are going finally is going to be different, initially was higher, finally it is coming which the place which is coming to is lower. So, final minus initial will be always a negative term. So, this gradient will always be negative, right. So, the matter flows down a concentration gradient from high concentration to low concentration, J will be positive when and J has to be positive and for that this difference or this gradient should be negative, whether we call it number density gradient with distance or we, we call the concentration gradient along z direction, either whatever you say that should be negative. So, since we have an equation like this, this side is positive flux, flux of matter as we said is not cannot be positive a negative and this side is going to be always negative. Then how can we have this? How can we have an equation which is one side is positive, one side is negative? So, therefore, what we have a positive value of j, what does it mean? A positive value of j signifies a flux towards positive z. If this is the 0, this side is the positive z. A negative value of j signifies a flux towards the negative side of z direction okay if i have if i am talking about a flow in this direction okay so it is it's it is essentially not the j which is negative j is always going to be positive but the sign if the positive and negative sign which we get signifies as to which direction the flow is taking place or the diffusion is taking place either it is towards the positive z direction along the positive z direction or along the negative z direction. Therefore, in this equation to have some parity with the signs, what we will look into? 
the constant uh, it since it is a proportionality which we have talked about so far. Now, if it is a proportional a, a relationship then we need to put in a proportionality constant right and to make the uh, mm, whole thing positive what we put we put this as negative okay. we put this as negative if this is negative then what we have we have the whole thing turning out to be a positive term if this is negative term then i have a uh, coefficient uh, i have a minus sign out here so overall it becomes a positive term so the proportionality constant the diffusion coefficient the in the expression will have a negative sign again diffusion coefficient cannot be negative we put a negative sign and d is the proportionality constant okay the si unit of flux of matter what is the flux of matter moles per unit area per unit time when the gradient of the concentration is in terms of the moles we have just now discussed but what will be the gradient moles per meter cube is the concentration and distance is m so it will be mole to the power minus 4 so from this we can find out what will be the uh, what do you call uh, the unit of this dif uh, deficient coefficient we have that equation we know this side we know the e expression for this side i can take this out multiply by z divided by d n v and i can get what is going to be the unit of d the diffusion coefficient that is nothing but meter square per second okay you can do it yourself similarly as we have talked about um, the uh, flow of matter in terms of the flux of matter similarly we have transport of heat energy and that is due to the gradient in temperature the flux of energy j in the z direction due to the temperature gradient can be represented by or is can be said to be proportional to the temperature gradient along this axis okay the rate of thermal conduction the rate of thermal conduction how fast it is going to like we are talking we were talking about diffusion in the transfer of matter or flow of matter what we are talking about here is the rate of thermal conduction so the rate of thermal conduction that is the flux of energy associated with the thermal motions of the molecules because as you have energy we have heat you have the, the thermal motions are supposed to be incre increasing so the flux of energy associated with these molecules which are um, uh, vibrating or moving due to uh, temperature is found to be proportional to the temperature gradient okay since the energy flows from uh, again this is an empirical observation energy flows from a temperature uh, flows down a temperature gradient from high to low temperature so z is always going to be uh, and the flux of energy will be always going to be positive when this is going to be while this is going to be negative the gradient is always going to be negative because we have we are starting from here we are moving along this axis along the temperature gradient where temperature is high here and temperature is low here so the gradient that means the first differential of t with z is going to be always negative because heat is or energy is going to flow always from the higher energy region to a lower energy re region and along this this side is we are always increasing this is always positive so this denominator is always positive numerator is what is going to be different the final is always going to be lower than the initial so when you take a difference of final minus initial to find out the gradient you will always get a t uh, delta t negative term so if delta t by the gradient delta t by z in z is positive the heat flow of heat is in the negative z direction and because it otherwise you cannot justify which is in the direction of us towards lower temperature which is actually not possible if the temperature gradient is negative the flow of heat is in the positive z direction 
which is direction from a higher temperature towards a higher from um, uh, movement of the uh, energy from a higher temperature to the lower temperature. Therefore, proportionality constant which we are going to be putting here, here is again we will put it uh, associate with a negative term. Again, I am going to tell you the coefficient itself is not negative. We are putting in the term uh, along with a negative sign to balance the sign difference between this uh, j and the gradient. The proportionality constant the thermal conduct uh, of thermal um, conductivity is expressed in terms of k a kappa and since uh, flux cannot be negative. So, what we have here we can rewrite this energy is going to be equal to minus kappa into the different uh, derivative or first differential of temperature or gradient of temperature with the distance z along which we are going to move. The SI unit of flux of energy j flux of energy is going to be what? The uh, energy passing per unit area per unit second. So, the energy unit is joules per meter square per second and the gradient will be what? Gradient is only the temperature difference per meter. So, Kelvin minus m uh, to, the, to the power minus m and the thermal coefficient now we can determine what will be the thermal coefficient from again like this what whatever we have for the flux we have the flux here multiply by d, 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 dz divided by dt you will get this expression. So, it is joules per mole in, uh, meter inverse second inverse Kelvin inverse this is the uh, kappa unit for kappa the thermal conductivity coefficient of thermal convert conductivity. Thermal diffusion as you see is a flux of uh, material due to difference in temperature. So, you just have a pay attention what I am saying. This is not uh, thermal conduction, I am talking about thermal diffusion. Diffusion process uh, arising uh, um, that means the flux of material arising out of a gradient in temperature. That means um, uh, gradient in temperature is this. If such a process is there, thermal diffusion um, uh, is the flux of material due to temperature gradient. This uh, thermal uh, coefficient, uh, whatever the coefficient, uh, diffusion coefficient we have, depends on the mass. Okay. So since it depends on the mass this effect is used to separate isotopes. Okay? So, the, if you have a diffusion process generated out of uh, movement of a matter due to temperature gradient, this coefficient which we associate thermal diffusion coefficient, not thermal co conductivity, not diffusion coefficient, but thermal diffusion coefficient which we have do not have in this paper it is just additional information I am giving you. The thermal diffusion co coefficient if we are finding out, this thermal diffusion coefficient is a factor dependent on a um, factor of the mass. So, this is used to separate isotopes. Okay? Next class we talk about the viscosity. Thank you.